Oh, yes, God. Father, we thank you for this day, for this time, God, for this season, for this dispensation that we are in. God, we thank you and we are waiting for the coming of your coming. God, bless us here and those that are listening over the internet right now and over the phone lines. In the name of Jesus, oh God, cover us under your precious blood. Give us your unmerited favor. Forgive us of any sin that be among us, God. Yes, Wash us in your precious yes. blood and renew us and cleanse us and give us the right spirit and clean. give us a clean heart, God. In the name of Jesus and purge us with hyssop and make us whiter than snow. In Jesus' righteous name and let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. I come to you, saints of God, today. The Lord, uh, I didn't have a message uh, for today, but the Lord had just given me a few verses uh, from the 23rd chapter of Job. Okay. All righty. So uh, we will go to Job 23. And this is where God is... And Job are having a conversation. And we are going to read the first 10 verses. And I shall take a text from the 10th verse. For he knows the way that I take. He knows the way that I take. He knows the way that I take. So I want you, I want everybody to repeat after me. Amen. Amen. And say, He knows. He knows the way. The way that I take. That I take. So we have this here in the scripture, and it says, you'll find this language. Then Job answered and said, Even to this day is my complaint bitter. My stroke is heavier than my groaning. Oh, that I know where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. I would order my cause before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would know the words which he would answer me and understand what he would say unto me. Will he plead against me with his great power? No, but he would put strength in me. There the righteous might dispute with him, so should I be delivered forever from my judge. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there, and backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand where he doeth work, but I, not, I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand that I cannot see him. But he knoweth the way that I take. <coughs> When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. So I'm saying this text for you today. My subject from the text of scripture is I shall come forth as gold. Repeat after me, saints. I, I shall come forth, shall come come forth as, gold. as gold. So we see here that the, the prophet here, he is going through uh, his sickness and he is having a conversation in his, his mind about what he should ask God. And of course, God knows uh, everything anyway. Man. And he's saying that to this day that his complaint is bitter and his stroke is heavier than his groaning. So he's pretty he's feeling pretty down and bad about himself because he's sick. And that his friends have uh, betrayed him and said that he has done God a disservice. So haven't you had it where a whole lot of things have happened to you and you got people around you saying, You must have did something bad. You must have did something wrong. You must be in sin because all this craziness is happening to you. You ever had that saint of God? Amen. Amen. Amen, somebody. But 
Just know that it is the trying of your faith. And from when your faith has been tried, God can see what you are really made of. Praise God. So what he does, we're going to use this analogy. When the goldsmith uh, finds the gold from the ground and he puts it in a crucible, an urn that is heated up to a high temperature. Then he takes the gold with the impurities in it and puts it in and heats it up to the temperature. Once the gold is heated up and all the impurities are there, the, the goldsmith takes the little spoon or the, or the instrument that he uses to scrape off the impurities off the top. So it's just what God does with us. When we have gone through trials and tribulations and being persecuted on every hand, the Bible says that we are perplexed and we're uh, on every side, that we're distressed. But, you know, we know God is still there. God is still able. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. So we understand that God He's having this conversation with the Lord in his mind that he said, oh, what that I knew where I might find him. So he's thinking in his mind, well, God, uh, where are you in this? I can't, I don't know where you are. You're not speaking to me at the moment, but uh, I would want to understand what you're going to say to me when you do respond. So when you do respond, God, what are you going to say? So he said, will he plead with me with a great power? And then he said, no. But he would put strength. So I want you to understand that where God is talking about strength, he said that in, in the scripture that he would give us wings. We would mount up wings as an eagle. Amen. We would run and not be weary. We will walk and not faint. What does that, what does that uh, break down to, people of God? What does that break down if you will, will, will run and not be weary, you will walk and not faint, and you will mount up wings as an eagle? This represents strength. Hallelujah to God. So he said that he would strengthen me. So God is a God that will strengthen you when you are weak. For the Bible says that we all should bear the infirmities of the weak. So us that are strong, we bear the infirmities of those that are weak in the faith. Amen. Amen. Those that don't know the things about God that need to be strengthened. The Bible goes into another context of Scripture where that uh, when you have a... <clears throat> when you have strengthened yourself, go, go strengthen your brother. In other words, bring someone else up after you have been strengthened. After God has healed you. After God has delivered you. Go back and get somebody else and bring them into the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That they can be saved and that they can be delivered. Hallelujah to God. And healed. And made whole. Processed out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And it says there the righteous might dispute with him. So we got those we got those self-right people. Uh, and then we even have those that are saved that will say, well, God, why does this person uh, deserve this? Well, they did this, God. They did that. But mostly when, when saying that, I believe when Job, when this was written, he might have been talking about the self-righteous. Could have been talking about his three friends. Because, you know, there are those that uh, will say that you are doing all of this stuff and all this stuff is happening to you. You done messed up somewhere. You done backslid. You done turned your back on God. So they would dispute and say, well, God, well, they, they done did this and they done did that. Why? Why are you trying to help them? So you have to be careful. Even what you pray, what you say, because you don't want to put a word curse out on somebody. Amen. Amen. So the best thing that we can do for somebody, the best thing in the universe we can do for somebody is pray for them. Amen. They may be in sin, they may be in shame, but, you know, after a while, the Bible says, 
the prayers of the righteous availeth much. So us that are saved, that love God, that have a right relationship with him, that are speaking, that are on speaking terms with God every day. Because our God is not a fair weather friend. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, yeah, Johnny Gill penned the song back in the 90s, uh, Fair Weather Friend, Be There to the End, uh, and all of that other stuff. But our God is not a fair weather friend. He, he is a friend that sticks closer than any brother. I want you to understand that. So, Job is going on to say that, uh, so should I be delivered forever from my judge. So, those people that were saying those things about him, passing judgment, saying, uh, well, you, you're wrong, you, you need to, you, you're going to go to hell. Because you, you just, oh, you just all messed up. God going to get you. Well, the Bible says that we should... Not fear man, but we should fear the one that can cast the soul and the body into hell. Amen. So, if I understand correctly, the only judge is the Lord and not us. Amen. He gives us insight to see into the spirit of the person at that moment. But God only knows the men, the weight uh, of men's hearts. Yes. God knows. And the only way that we can know about someone's heart is if God gives it to us. If he puts it in our spirit to go and touch and pray for that person. Or that person may have had so many things on it. And by intercession, you could, you could feel what they are feeling. What's going on within their spirit, within their heart. Man. The Bible says, guard thy heart with all due diligence. For out of it flows the what? The issues of life. So, with that being said, that he said, Behold, I go forward, but he is not there. So, when we move forward in those things, we go in a certain direction. We say, Okay, God, I didn't, did what you said. I moved this way, but where are you? I can't see you, God. Then we... Take those steps back. God says go backwards. We go there. Then we cannot perceive where he is. We're like, God, where are you? I can't feel your presence, God. I can't feel you near me. I done came over and went this way and then went that way. But God, where are you? Hallelujah. We get those times in, in, in life that we feel that God has left us all alone. That we are walking all by ourselves. And, that, and, and a Amen. good analogy to use from that, there was a, a painting uh, that showed footprints on the sand of a beach. And when the person that penned this poem said that there were two footprints at the start of, this, of his soliloquy. But then he said there came a time when there was one footprint. And he said, well, God, I only see one footprint, but uh, uh, where are you, Lord? Have you left me? You left me, God. I've seen one footprint. But God replied, when you've seen one footprint, it was me carrying you. Amen. So understand, people of God, through your trials and through your tests, God will carry you. God will cover you under his wings, as it says in the scripture. Those that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Thank you, man. He is my rock. He is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my deliverer. In Him will I trust. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Us up. Amen. Oh, God. Hallelujah. On the left hand where he works. In other words, God always works in mysterious ways. We heard that before. We don't know where what God is doing in the realm of the spirit, but it was already preordained before the foundations of the world, even to this point, what God was going to do of what your situation is right now. Praise God. Everything that God does is perfect. It may not seem perfect to us. Hallelujah to God. But it is perfect to him. God never makes a mistake. God always had things predestined. Done beforehand, before thoughts. And we're not 
just went out an afterthought in his mind, but he broods over us. He, he covers us like a hen broods over her chicks. For whom the Lord loveth, he does what? He chases and scourges every son whom he receives. And it's just like every time we get out of line, God has to chastise us. And then when he chastises us, he gets us back in line in where we're supposed to be and to say, understand, I, I whip you because I love you. And he allows us to go through things in, in this life because it's to show, uh, to test of our faith, not only for our faith, but also to have a testimony of how God brought me out. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. I just still think about just a few months ago when the, when the Lord had me to pray for that old mother at New Beginnings Church. And the old mother couldn't hardly stand up. And she had problems with her skin and it seemed like it was, it looked like it was rotting. Oh my God. And she said her blood pressure was real high. And the Lord said, lay hands upon her and pray for this mother. I prayed the prayer that the Lord told me to pray in the name of Jesus and anointed her with oil. And when we came back to that church again for a Women's Day service, the mother said, that's the man of God right there. I told pastor that when I see you, that I was going to tell you what God had done for me. Hallelujah. God is still in the, in the miracle working business. It's not the miracles of old as the apostles and as the prophets did, but the miracles are still fresh today. Hallelujah to God. For he called some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. For what? For the upbuilding of the, the kingdom. And also, the other part of the scripture said, Till we all come into the knowledge of the Son of God. So the miracle signs and wonders are going to still happen until Jesus comes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah to God. Amen. And I'm going back to the other part. I can't ever hold him, but he hiding himself on the right hand and I cannot see him. We can't see what God's doing. You always heard a song that God has a blessing with your name on it. You've heard that song, people of God? Mm -hmm. Blessings with your name on it. God has it with your name on it. Hallelujah. Last scripture. But he, who's he? God knows the way that I take. God knows my direction because God is a lamp into my feet. He's a light into my path. He is the word. He is Elohim. He is El Shaddai. He's Jehovah Sikhanu. He's Jehovah Jireh. Hallelujah. He knows the way that I take. But when he has tried me, when he has put me through the fire, when he has burned the drops off, when he has put me on display and he has shined me and buffed me to where he can see his reflection. I shall come forth as what? Gold! Amen. Hallelujah to God. I shall come forth as gold. Hallelujah to God. I remember the old saints used to sing this song. I'm going to put on my robe. I'm going to tell the story how I made it over. Glory to God. And one day when we all see Jesus, the Bible says that when we see him, when we see him, we shall see him as he is. We shall see him. We shall see the nails in his, that went through his hands. We shall see him, the Lord of glory, in his glorified state. As he steps on the cloud, then the trumpet shall sound. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And those that are alive and remain, we shall do what? Be called up, called up. to meet him in the air. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He knows the way that I take. When he's tried me, 
I shall come forth as gold. I shall come forth as gold. And when I come forth as gold, God will polish me just as the goldsmith polishes the gold. And when all the impurities have been destroyed and burned off, and God has gotten us to a place where he wants us, where we have been purified, then he can see his reflection in us. Don't you want God to see his reflection in you? Yes, Lord. Hallelujah to God. It's not I, but it's the Christ that liveth in me. Glory to Jesus. He knows the way that I take for when he has tried me. I shall come forth as gold. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Amen.